Welcome back. Uh, today we're taking a look at advanced search in Leechus. Uh, specifically, advanced search here is based upon the Leela search library. Leela search is based on an intermediate library, Elastic 4S, which is a wrapper. It's a web portal, web services wrapper for the Elastic Search engine. Elastic Search is an enhanced version of the Apache Lucene project, uh, which itself is a full text search engine. So we've got wrappers around wrappers around wrappers around wrappers here. We just got wrappers all the way down. <laughs> Not really, but it feels like it. Um, and um, last year we successfully upgraded dependencies and migrated this uh, search capability here, which allows you to find games by any player and all kinds of criteria. Um, but also the search engines used like in the forums where you can search and other places like you go to a player profile you can invoke the same here's some games and we're going to do some advanced search game filtering and i think all searches for the entire site i think are powered by this singular search engine which i guess has some economies of scale as long as everything's working right um and the question is, well, when things aren't working right, what could go wrong? And that's not a very helpful question, but that's where we're starting today. Um, so yesterday, or rather late yesterday, early this morning, depending how you look at it, um, I started digging into this and figured, found a couple issues. Um, one, that this is a wrapper for Elastic for Search, which um, has had a number of things change. Um, although I can't really see what those changes are. <laughs> we'll get back into that in more detail in a minute. And two, uh, that this project has unit tests, in fact. However, the unit tests themselves um, are not reporting any errors. And, you know, it'd be kind of nice if, uh, well, I'll show you where we are with that as well. Um, so maybe this seems like the easier thing for me to explain. So let me try to explain it first. Uh, do I still have this Leela search? No, I don't. Travis. Okay. Uh, let's go to Google. Sorry for this uh, Travis Leela search. It's probably not going to find it, but uh, Travis CI. And so that's the Travis Continuous Integration Platform. Oh, I'm not even signed in here. I'll sign in. That's cool. So now I'm signed in. Nice. I don't know if this has a dark mode. I hope so. Sorry for the tangent on the tangent on the tangent here. Hey, it found here's all my GitHub projects and stuff. Yeah, I, I'm not finding a dark mode setting here anywhere. We've got repositories, we've got settings. <laughs> you can turn on Comic Sans, you can turn on Dashboard and Pride. But no dark mode. Beautiful. Um, well. All right, so the site doesn't have dark mode. Um, uh, what says stylus? Has anybody ever made a dark mode for this? How about this one? Um, hmm, not quite the color palette I was going for. How about this one? How about not that one? All right. Um, how about this one? No. All right. How about this one? That's okay. I kind of like the first one I tried best. Um, this is probably not going to work very well. Yeah. Um, okay. I guess we'll just go with Travis Org Dark. That seems fine. Sorry if that's a bit color intense for most viewers, but 
Um, anyway, so this project, Leela Search, has a number of tests. It has two, two is a number. Two is the number of tests that this project has defined uh, that run both under uh, OpenJDK 8 and OpenJDK 11, even though I don't think we ever deploy leeches with anything newer than OpenJDK 8. Uh, so here you see, like, here's um, Git cloning the project and submodules and whatever kind of stuff is needed to allocate stuff and engage the test. Uh, SBT being the simple build tool, compiles your project, uh, and then attempts to compile your tests. And it turns out the test classes that were bundled with the Leela search project don't compile. So presumably at the date and time at which they were introduced, these tests did compile, and just right now they aren't compiling because the code got changed, but um, despite code changes, you know, it just um, the tests weren't updated to reflect the code changes. So surely the tests must have worked at some point. At least that's my hypothesis. Like, why would you write a test that doesn't work? So, um, so anyway, here I've got a file to enable Travis continuous integration reporting and building. Um, so GitHub can automatically notify Travis when changes have been pushed and then Travis can engage in its continuous integration testing. Um, so that's one piece of the puzzle is like we'd like the tests to be up and running. Two is that Elastic for Search upon which Leela Search is based, um, or Elastic for S, um, has some changes and I'd like to better understand what, but you know there's no this is the release note, releasing 651. I guess that's the commit message. And then you can go here and see, okay, here's what they did uh, January 28th. Uh, so let's see, the previous 630, 638, 650, 640. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed this the other day. So if I were to look at things um, committed after the 640 release, and before the 651 freeze, so if I were to look at that range, that would actually tell me what I'm interested in. So I've been complaining about nothing. Uh, that was silly. So I had difficulty finding this 640 tag as a point of comparison. All right, so there's been 250 commits to master since this tag. Um, I'm just curious about the ones that go through January, because that's when 651 was frozen. So, and it's possible some of these commits didn't make it into the 651 branch or tag or release or whatever. Um, Git has a number of ways you can accomplish workflows. Um, I'm not really familiar with all of them, but um, going on an assumption that at least some of these things made it into the 651 release. Um, actually, I, I want to compare not current master, but I want to compare 651 or 65x directly to 64. This, I spent like 10 something, probably more than that. I'm just too embarrassed to admit how many minutes trying to figure out how to get this comparison the other day. Um, this is exactly what I was looking for in terms of could something here be the fix for the problem Lee Chess is encountering where services are unavailable. A fix is probably too strong a word, but could this be an enhancement that makes the site work better and more fault tolerant and protect against faults or I don't know. So is this somehow safer to use than the version that's currently deployed, the 6.4 or 6.4.1. Could we just upgrade that to 6.5? So, changes. Other than bumping the version number, which is super exciting, um, there's a fix to a method. And there's an issue number explaining that there was some kind of issue. 
this issue. Synonym token filter contains a require, which fails when constructor is called with empty path and synonyms. Yeah, so if you're using a synonym token filter, you have a problem with the 6.4 release, at least until this, which patches 6.4, um, which is okay. At instances for cat's effect, monix and scala z. <laughs> um, <laughs> Refactor the error model to hold the nested error message clause. See, that seems like a useful uh, feature, but wait, setting version to 636? I'm confused. Why would that be bundled? Never mind, that's probably irrelevant that says setting version to 636 because that's probably in versions after 636 as well. But it couldn't have made it into 640 because this got committed after 6.4.0, but might have made it into 6.4.1, because we started 6.4.1 snapshot, at which time this got committed. So possibly if there are errors that are reported, uh, for reported errors, um, the nested causes will be contained. That doesn't really fix anything, it just improves the error reporting. So that if you have a problem and if an error is reported, you can better react to it. Um, at instances for cat's effect, IO monics and scale is the, so what's the issue here? Why'd we do it? Um, there's some good work that's been done to create modules and executors for, or executors. I said it the other way because uh, I've worked with Java and has a class called executor service. I guess you could also call that executor service, but that seems silly. Um, but yeah, to create modules and executors for a cat's effect, IO, monix task, and scale z task, but there have been a couple things which are missing thus far, namely an instance of functor f and the lack of, okay, so this is a new feature for cat's effect. Um, for that sort of IO and task and task. Um, hmm. So this is, apparently a, a large refactor that's done for some kind of development so you can get back future T's uh, or use an alternative executor or T with response so you can inject your own executors to execute stuff um, not really sure what elastic for us cats and cats IO and all that are about but cool that you got some new feature probably doesn't make the service more resilient, if I had to guess. Um, add failover to ACA HTTP client. See, this is what caught my attention the other day, although I probably should have read it more carefully. Um, and I'm just curious about the rest of this. Is this stuff I should worry about? We bumped Elasticsearch itself to 652. Um, got some other fixes, but I don't think that any of those directly pertain to Leech Us's problem. Um, unless, like, this happens to be the particular problem, but if this is a large problem, you know, um, well, first of all, more like this does not sound like something I've ever seen on Leech Us, and second, if that were a large problem, it should have its own issue number like these other issues that have been referenced. Not saying that all developers follow that pattern, but hopefully the maintainers would insist or better explain themselves um, than just give a one-line summary and not have an issue number or not have a multi-paragraph explanation with it. I'm asking for a lot. And it's perhaps unreasonable for me to ask it, but um, anyway. So, this concept of more like this, and uh, it's established up here, is probably that given an example, I want to find other examples that are similar in some way. Um, and that's probably not Leech Us's issue, because I've never seen here's a game, go find a similar game. I mean, I found here's an opening, 
go find um, other games in this opening. But I think that's a separate database, def a separate service anyway. Um, tried to implement here. Similar retry in hosting or host blacklisting logic in the official, official REST client. Um, mm -hmm. So, curious. So, I guess if you're using this service restfully, um, you want failover to work. Oh, with blacklisting and stuff. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm probably not qualified to read this code and understand it. Um, and I'm only saying that because there's a lot of it here and while I could put in effort to read it and ultimately figure out what it's doing and how it's doing it, this is probably a better summary for somebody like me who doesn't uh, work in Scala every day and who's also trying to entertain an audience here. Yes, I could figure it out given time and effort, but it's not a good use of time and effort when I can just trust what the developer is doing here. Um, so. Exceptions in some HTTP codes will trigger a retry until a max retry timeout is reached. Uh, and then mark a host dead and be excluded from round robin for some time. See that latter point seems to make the service more resilient in general. So I'm wondering if that could help with leech us issue. And we can't really know for sure. Um, unless we can replicate the issue as some leech us developers are attempting to do. But is there anything else here I should concern myself with or no? I know like Elasticsearch is, uh, has an emphasis on performance and clustering, so distributed network based searching and stuff, which uh, seems audacious. I guess if it works, it works, so that's cool. Um, Oh. Fix date query test. What? No issue number. Why would you not? Is that the end of the commit history? Yes, it is. So why is there not an issue number here? I don't get it. Um. Sup? <laughs> so extreme. It's extreme programming because you guys are going to be telling me how to fix my bugs. <laughs> I'm only mostly joking. Because uh, ultimately what's going to happen here is you, the loyal viewership, are going to know twice as much as I know. And maybe I should have tried doing this, like, I don't know, with leechess.org in my title and I would have got, like, a ridiculous viewer count until they decide to unfront page me <laughs> but i trust that somehow we will find people on the internet capable of solving problems um and not just creating them i'm i'm quite good at creating problems solving them i'm okay at but uh, i don't think anybody's perfect at problem solving per se um anyway so this is about fixing a date query test emphasis on the word test so yeah i assume this is primarily about fixing a test class rather than actually changing in fact here is the test class name yeah, if i fold that that's the only change here so yeah so basically what i'm finding is that this 650 might do some better things with the restful web interface oh um, yeah, so here I'm trying to, um, make a service that we're using more resilient. So we have a web server that's got all kinds of services that are powered by, um, our wrapper, Leela search of the Elastic for S wrapper which wrappers Elasticsearch, which is a layer built upon, or an extension of Apache Lucene. So it's turtles all the way down, but yeah, there's, uh, we just want this service to always be available and work and perform well. And I'm 
grasping at straws, trying to figure out what can I do better. Um, so one thing I can do is upgrade from this version of Elasticsearch 6.4.0 to something newer. I'm assuming probably 6.5 would be a reasonable candidate. Um, even though it's probably not going to fix the issue. Because I'm not aware that we use our uh, service in a restful manner where it would benefit from um, being able to do uh, proper blacklisting. But if somebody's hitting our API service really hard, maybe that might have something to do do with improving things. I'm not sure. Yeah. And that's fair. I just think, like, if we get a thousand people in my audience, it's, it's not happening. But, I don't know, if, like, if you find ten people, probably one of them is going to know more about one or more of these things than I know. So, I'm calling it extreme programming, even though, um, probably I'm SOL so um, yeah I covered a couple things here one that I like to upgrade this elastic 4s version because why not it couldn't hurt as far as I'm concerned but uh, deferring deferring to the actual maintainer of the project to make a decision about that but two let's get the unit tests working because once we get tests working, then we can start adding more tests and verify some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I get, like, some people do that. That's not my tact. Um, but, yeah, I could have, like, Soldier Boy going. Would that do it? That's what would bring all the people here, right? Good old Soldier Boy. Um, so anyway, here's the Travis... Uh, error report saying there are some problems compiling your tests, sir. And now I'm going to transition to coding. Dun dun dun. Alright, so your object is to save the world while still leading a pleasant life. Yes, sir. I've got Kause piped to Kause. Uh, but also I've got um, Fortune piped to Kause to Kause. It's beautiful. You got a nice, simple cow. Um, yeah. Totally not thinking evil things. So, let's see. Is that... Uh, is my stream capturing... Yes, it is. Wow. Way to go. You can see both the chat and the command prompt. Putty is now my new favorite way of SSHing for stuff I'm streaming. That's nice. Um... Yeah, so this is a putty window, um, meaning if I type SL, yeah, uh, we're connected to a Linux box. It's not too far away. Um, so SL's there to help you improve your typing habits by never typing that. So now I've improved my typing habits. Um, so let's see what we got. Oh, I forgot. I've also got this going in Tmux, so... Uh, the Scala build tool, or simple build tool, I forget what it stands for. Howdy. Well, if it isn't Teluge, welcome. Very cool to see you here. What is SL? All right, let's get there. Uh, so I can split my terminal. That's not SL, by the way, but man SL. It displays animations to correct users who accidentally mistype the listing command ls. So you can have like accidents and flying trains and other stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, written by Toyota Masashi of Japan. This manual page was written by Brian Rustusia of Debian and Ken Shimuto, also Debian, for Debian GPU Linux system. I'm sorry, Debian GNU slash Linux, or GNU plus Linux. Um, not to harp too much on that, but the GNU part is very important. Linux part is, I guess, important too. But um, So yeah, here I can hop over. Uh, I can type that 
let's test all my test classes and continuously recompile and retest my test classes. Meanwhile, I'm sure you're curious what those tests are. So they are application spec and integration spec. Uh, I'm curious. Yeah, so this is um, a special styling of LS. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to get the information listing for this, but there's a special form of LS. Um, they've given the special name of LSD. I forget. It's some extended. I think that's what the D stands for, is extended um, listing. Uh, is the issue with failed game searches not show up in the Leechess logs? I do not know. I know as much as you do, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, I'm going to assume that probably this is not something indicated in the logs. Probably this is just a hanging service of some sort that just um, is suffering and going into live lock, um, but I don't know. All right, go enjoy the YouTubes. Those are great. I don't blame you. <laughs> no, I don't blame you at all. <laughs> uh, does the issue with failed game searches not show up in the logs? Yes, I think it's probably a live lock or spin lock or some other sort of service that runs indefinitely and does not come back sort of thing. Um, so I'm not sure if upgrade to 651 would fix that or not, but I'm guessing so, but I can't guarantee it. Um, so I don't know what to do other than fix the damn um, compilation errors. So actually both of these tests, application spec and integration spec are failing. Integration spec fails because injection of a browser uh, is failing because, well, that's way more complicated than, that's not even a unit test, that's an integration test that's leveraging JUnit, which is kind of exciting in its own way, but um, application spec, let's try to understand first. So on the left here, you have three errors found. Um, and each of them is happening wherever we're using the route function. Um, so I guess maybe I lied at saying you know as much as I do because uh, I spent some time trying to understand this code. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, and I've not given uh, any of the staff a hard time about this, but like, um, yeah, I don't know much about what appears, if anything, in the logs. I have run Leechus instances on my PC, and a lot of stuff gets logged. So, and if I were to pick a way to trawl through a log, I guess I'd probably use an elk stack, like, what's that, Elasticsearch and Lucene and whatever the K stands for, but... Uh, Elasticsearch itself is failing, so grepping logs or using full text search through logs could be challenging without it. It's quite the catch-22. Um, but also why, generally speaking, you don't design stuff using... Um, there's a saying that if you designed a system as clever as you can, um, that uh, you're not clever enough to debug said clever system that you can only um, if you coded something as cleverly as possible you can't be clever enough to debug it which raises the question do you code things simpler or do you learn more about debugging and the answer is yes <laughs> um, so uh, what do we got Sorry, I'm just looking through the Lee Chess Discord here to see if I missed anything. Um, I have not. 
Um, but yeah, I spent some time like trying to change these commands here. One thing I have discovered is that if I comment out this entire test, it compiles. Like if I comment out application should through the end brace down there, then it starts compiling. So that's great. It's just not particularly useful for addressing the errors we're seeing. Um, uh, also, the other test starts erroring out. Now, this seems like a... Um, whoever wrote this probably has a better idea of what's going on than I do. So, um, uh, I did do some analysis, and the only conclusion I've reached so far is that the top test here is easier to understand than the bottom test. So let's focus on the top one. Um, so the error that we're encountering is that um, the overloaded, overloaded method value route, which has alternatives, um, um, cannot be applied to a fake request. So, hmm, <laughs> I would have thought that a fake request would be analogous to a request of T, but apparently not. Um, so, it's, I guess this isn't a, I'm sorry, what are the data types I'm working with here? Can that be applied to fake request. So I'm curious. Uh, overload method value route with alternatives. So hmm, when I'm calling with application, does with application give me a real application? Um, I guess alternatively, like if I just say route here, what happens? Yeah, so, and if I say route, and again, I'm like way out of my element here, but um, I think route this spells out that a with application and a play API application are not the same thing. Um, I could look this up to see whether a play API test, like what data type is a with application type. Or I assume that with application would apply a type of, I I'm still learning Scala. <laughs> There's so much about this language and I am, not qualified, but we're gonna figure it out. So this is why I'm starting down this path first, is so I can learn maybe something that's reusable. Um, um, mm, sorry, uh, we'll get there in a second, but I'm curious, like if I start here with a with application, so this just directly extends object, but it provides an application for the JUnit test. Make sure your test class extend this class. An application will be started each time the test is invoked. You can set up the application. Uh, yeah. So this does have a prop protected application member. How do I access said application? Provide application? But no, you would override this yeah, no, I'm thinking that, like, probably there's an implicit somehow. <sighs> Can I just say app? Is that how I say it? Um, well, let's look here. Creating application instances for testing. Uh, with application. To pass an application, an example, use with application explicit application can be passed in but a default application created by the default juice application builder is provided for convenience because it's a built-in with an around block you can override it to provide your own data population 
Um, <laughs> so... That just assumes that, like, that was the most trivial example, and it really isn't. Um, still, I would have thought... Here, let me go back to my terminal. I would have thought that this problem would not be a problem here. That the application would be covered by the fact that this does instantiate the application needed for the route. And so I think it's just a matter of getting a request of T constructed. I think I do have an application instance. Um, again, I could be wrong. Hmm. I guess I could form a method that consumes an application and try passing it the with application and see if the with application is accepted implicitly. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. Type mismatch. So a test with application and an API application differ. So I think I have to um, consume app even though that's... I don't know if that's the right way to consume it, um, but okay. Now this is a thought. So could I just say route app comma fake request? I'm a genius. It compiles. I am so smart. Not really, but um, all right. We got some other problem. That's cool. But I think that's in the other test file. Uh, so, yeah, we'll get... Oh, I'm sorry, I can't scroll up out of that, but I'm pretty sure that's the other file which is failing. Um, <laughs> or at least this test is compiling now, is the point. Um, and so if I wanted to re-enable said other test, I could compile said other test here. As long as I'm routing the fake request and specifying the application to route, um, the fake request can be converted to a request of T, or a request with mix in T. Hey, Mango, welcome. Did not mean to like go off on this big tangent, but I've been losing my mind trying to understand everything all at once. So it's great. It's awesome. Um, but also, I might have something to patch to leech us, which is super special. Um, okay. So we got error during test, um, both application spec and integration spec. But at least said tests compile. Huzzah. Um, now, I think I do this, and then it's like, what, control... P? No, oh, control P, no. Control V and then P. No. Dang it, there's some way to enable scrolling. Control B, left bracket. There we go. It's left bracket. Left index bracket thing. And then it allows me to scroll back up through the console here. So my problem now is I'm unable to create a custom injector in order to send 404 on a bad request. Uh, could not find a suitable constructor in Leela search ES client. Classes must have one only one constructor to, for inject or a zero arguments constructor that's not private for the ES client class. While looking at ES client for the second parameter of web API in it. While uh, so there's this big landslide of reasons that it couldn't do the thing I asked it to do. Um, but is it fair to say that my code compiles now? I'm pretty sure it does. Yes, it does. In fact, it was already compiled. Um, so, ship it. 
<laughs> uh, get branch dash v. Get check out Travis because this was always busted. Get add test. Um, wait, what? Oh, get add application spec. That's Scala. All right, and we still have the same errors, but at least the tests can compile and stuff. Get status. Um, get log indicates like we're gonna enable a Travis build. Um, get status. Get commit. Compile application spec. Uh, wait, that's not an explanation. An explanation would be um, update test to uh, usage of play of route app. So once that's pushed, um, so you see this is successfully pushed onto uh, GitHub. So let's hop back. Uh, here GitHub, here GitHub, somewhere. What tabs do I even have open? I don't remember. Not that one. Oh, yeah, turns out we're right here. So here's my project. Super exciting, I know. You see here is a little spinning icon indicating it's processing. If you don't believe it, you can drill down on the test and watch the log in real time. Super exciting. So this way, if a developer has their PC able to produce some errors and a different developer has different issues on their PC, here we got a cloud service willing to break ties and tell developers no, seriously, developer A, you broke it, go fix it, sort of thing. Um, yeah. Nice one. Blind pattern matching. Classic approach for complicated problems. Um, sure. I'll take it. <laughs> um... So we're going to see here momentarily the same error that we observed in my console uh, once this finishes compiling and testing. So done compiling, and now it's compiling two Scala sources. Okay. I thought there were... Huh. I would expect like two Scala test sources or something, but... Oh, I'm sorry, there it is. Test classes. Anyway, so application should work. From within a browser. Um, wait, were there not multiple errors? I got three errors. Oh, there's another one. Should send 404 on a bad request, and the application should whatever. Um, where's the other error I encountered? Should send 404 on a bad request, and should render the index page. So all of these are failing due to the same ES client dependency injection sort of stuff. And at present, my head is exploding trying to figure all that out. So I think I might wrap it up there, even though it's very embarrassing to wrap it up at this point. We've actually made some progress. And um, it's probably worth getting input from the other Lee Chess folks, because I... I would be astonished if somebody could figure this stuff out. This is going to take time and effort. Um, like configuring, wiring your dependency injection using Spring or whatever other wiring framework you're using is... It's not easy. <laughs> it's why to date uh, with my projects so far that I've done at work and just in general I've avoided dependency injection 
because yes, it can solve problems, but oh, it can it create other problems. So, um, but no, apparently um, Scala is like, yeah, bring it. So <laughs> apparently that's how Scala implements its stuff under the hood is it need, it makes some assumptions about how your application works. And I guess in many cases, those assumptions are valid, but just not here. Um, anyway, so once tests are up and running, then we can start talking about, um, or other developers can in parallel work on their theories about how to troubleshoot this, because that will be still very important. I just think it's also important to get a baseline for comparison going. Because if we think the service was working at one time, um, and we think we had some test coverage, in theory it should be possible to add additional units and maybe even integration tests. Um, I'm not so sure about system tests. Those are harder to produce and maintain and guarantee that they are accurate. But, um, yeah, at least these things should continue working. Um, so arguably one thing I could do is, um, uh, what's the word? Get bisect. Just keep going up and down the get history, trying to find the date at which this last worked, but that's not going to address the immediate problem here. The immediate problem being that, um, this ES client class, um, Let's see, it must have either one and only one constructor annotated with inject or must have a non-private zero argument constructor. Well, I was really pessimistic about my ability to parse that, but you know, I think I might actually know enough to know what that might mean. Um, so even though it's not said directly, like it's not said in English there. Uh, when when it said could not find a suitable constructor, that had me panic a bit. But this second part of the explanation class classes must have either one constructor um, that's annotated with inject, or must have a zero argument constructor that's non-private. I actually understand that, even though the rest of this is confusing. Um, and I guess this way of phrasing it in English is probably more sensible than classes um, must have a constructor that's uh, annotated with inject, and it must be the only constructor that's annotated with inject, um, or must have a zero argument constructor. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess we could take a look at some esclient.scala code. What's the worst that could happen? We could spin for a very long time, but um, let's try to be more optimistic. Find print grep esclient.scala. Where is my, here it is. Uh, apparently that's how we package our code these days for this. Um, so this has a constructor. Uh, final class ES client. Uh, how many apply method? Okay, there's no apply method. Um, so is that to say that there's only the one constructor here? That, like, all this other stuff in the ES client that Scala is. Okay. So if I were to just. <laughs> but wait. Um, I'm confused. If I'm going to add an inject annotation to this constructor, no, no, no. Let's not start here. Um, let's look through the history. Uh, get log of this and see what we have. Um. Surprisingly enough, it's working. In my feelings, exactly. Um, get diff. Let's diff this branch with just 
specifically esclient.scala and see what what did this used to look like. So this um, previously this had an implicit execution context. Or is that currently we have an implicit? Yeah, I think currently we have an implicit execution context, right? Am I reading that right? Yeah. So we have a single construct. No, we have we have a dual constructor. One where you provide a client. Two. I'm oh, sorry. No, we have a we have a constructor. It does not wired with inject. It requires a client and has an implicit execution context but maybe there's a way to supply the execution context anyway so maybe there are multiple constructors I'm not sure um, anyway you can see on the left oh, I'm sorry each time I do vim instead of view um, there's some temporary vim files that get created and stuff and it's causing um, SBT on the left to panic when I start and stop editing files. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The other thing I should look for is the log of what happened with the test folder. Um, so that was committed August 31st. Of 2015 um, and do we have anything corresponding here for August 31st 2015 like what's the timeline under which we touched this file um, <clears throat> all right so here when we upgraded to Elasticsearch 2.1 we fixed some backward compatibility breaks so I think that's the version uh, I want to compare um, uh, this esclient.scala and see what was my constructor like back then. So that accepted a client and not an execution context, just a client. And like I'm not seeing any apply method, so I think that the declaration up there is the constructor. Um, Again, my usage or knowledge of Scala syntax is quite fuzzy. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I still don't understand how, oh, I'm sorry, this became relevant because on the left, a ES client could not be constructed while locating controllers.webapi for the second parameter of routes in it. Um, so this is not just at the top of the stack. This is, um, well, depends on your definition of, this would be, I guess, at the top of the stack. This is not at the root cause of the stack. The root cause is we're trying to do something else, which caused us to get into here in the first place. Um, while we were locating controllers.webapi for the second parameter of routers in it, um, so yeah, something about this juice magic injection stuff isn't quite working. Uh, okay, yeah, search for inject elsewhere. Uh, oops, capital inject, duh. Um, so yeah, there we do have an example of injection. Um, um, I can't read this purple on black. Oh, I did Vim again. <laughs> SBT's going to panic once more. That's great. But, um, yeah. So just add the magic keyword inject, and it just works. So maybe that's what I do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, yeah, inject with no parameters. Yeah, that seems simple enough. Let's just do that. That could work, right? Uh, this is black magic if it does work, by the way, but, um, 
So after the class name, at inject, there's no freaking way this possibly works. But this has been my experience with Scala. Like, you just type things, and it, the compiler gives you a different error message, and you just type some more things, and it just works. Um, hopefully Scala 3 will be easier to understand than this. Um, for somebody who's not like a hobbyist, occasionally trying to do exciting things. Um, oh, yeah, I have to like define where I'm getting inject from. Uh, so let's go find that. Inject is defined where again? I don't remember. Java X inject, sure, that looks right. Java X inject. Sure, let's do it. So you just fix the compile error, and then you fix the other compile error. And eventually you get like the 1,000 compile errors to reduce down to one. And the one compile error you have remaining is be happening because it prevents all the other compile errors. Because um, the compiler can't get far enough to see all the other mistakes you're making. Yeah, oh, that makes sense, yeah. Actually, why am I putting it there? I should put it next to Scala. Put all my non-library dependencies, like my Java and Scala dependencies, up top first. Would make more sense. Um, so we got some other error, right? I don't even know. It seems to work, right? We got a different error. That means it's fixed. It totally means it's fixed. I'm a genius. All right, so what do we have this time? Good God, what have I done? Send 404 on a bad request. Unable to create injector due to no implementation for Elastic for us. HTTP Elastic Client was bound while locating the Elastic Client for the first parameter of ES. So different, very slightly different error message that the injector creation failed. That's not the same message, right? Tell me I'm making progress. <laughs> oh, I guess I am making progress. I got the import statement for inject there. That was great. Um, but yeah, there's no implementation of an injector for that. Um, <laughs> Seriously out of depth, swim to shore. Uh, yeah, that seems right. That seems correct. Uh, so our initial problem was could not find a suitable constructor for Leela search ES client. Classes must have one and only one constructor annotated with inject or a zero argument constructor that's non private. Um, so. Um, that didn't have a zero argument constructor, so I just annotated the existing constructor with inject. And turns out that's not the silver bullet. <laughs> yeah, swimming for sure is probably not a bad idea. Uh, there's probably some implicit to go find the injector and inject the thing and do the magic. And it's great when it works. Um, but save... Um, it suffices to say I won't be pull requesting this unless I could get this to actually pass the test. Uh, I was able to at least get the code, the test code, to compile. So that is pull requestable, but the resulting errors that affect application code, I'm not going to patch the application in a way that uh, leaves the tests broken. Um, I can patch the tests all I want, uh, as long as it doesn't get any better or worse, it doesn't matter, but, um, or rather, as long as the tests are still failing, it doesn't matter what I do to the tests, uh, because there's still the opportunity to get them working again. But if I am changing the application code to get the tests working, I better have a way of testing that I haven't broken the application. So, um... But yeah, that's pretty funny. I couldn't create the injector. 
the other remaining thing I can do here um, is look at like okay somebody added an injector to the other class right um, to whatever this is so I can get blame this to find like who added that and when and what else were they doing um, but that might be challenging now this is class web API inject the other one said final class uh, ES client inject so let's do view instead of in yeah final class ES client final seems I mean it doesn't change any functionality furthermore I thought that that was I thought Scala had sealed and Java had final I didn't know you could finalize well finalization is something else but I didn't know you could declare a class final within a Scala file that's pretty special um, so that's to say that they're I, I, I don't know and I wonder if sealed and final mean the same thing. I'm going to guess no, because, I don't know, Scala is concise, and it wouldn't make sense for the beer to be two words that meant exactly the same thing. Um, but, yeah. Now here the imports are categorized differently, which is exciting as well. Um, but, yeah. Swimming to shore is probably the safest course of action. Um, and leaving the rest of this adventure for another time. So, yeah, that's extreme programming. <laughs> uh, I don't know that I could really improve this further. This is pretty great. Um, I will figure it out. It's just a matter of like picking a lock. It's just a matter of time, trial and error. Just try enough combinations of things until you find the thing that works. But at least having to explain my thoughts to an audience forced me to be more coherent and actually make sense of what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, I should not do package imports if I can help it. If I only need inject, let's only import inject. No sense importing the world. Um, Still, that doesn't fix the problem, and I'm not sure it makes the code any better, so I'm not going to pull request that until the test passes. Look for other parts of the code where ES client is injected. Yeah, right. Yeah, this is good progress. We got the tests compiling. Um, the tests are failing, but yeah, we got the Travis integration. Oh, yeah. Let's take one last look at that, shall we? And then we can peace out. But um, I'm sorry. This did. This was already there. I forgot. But yeah. Here. Here's our tests unsuccessful. And um, yeah, I was able to add the inject keyword. Although I don't think an ES client ever gets injected. Um, but it's worth thinking about. So think about that and think about like. Is there really a need to inject an ES client and wherever the heck we're using it in the web API? Um, or maybe there's a way of consuming a web API for test purposes that doesn't require injection of a client but somehow otherwise provides a fake client or something. Anyway, um, Scala is exciting, isn't it? Um, yeah, so. Uh, I guess at work I'm, I'm debating at some point trying to present Scala as a serious subject, but probably Kotlin is what's going to get presented instead because um, Kotlin looks like something people could understand and not have to do this kind of black magic wizardry to get going um, and has practical applications, whereas Scala is interoperable with Java and preserves... A couple Java features that we're currently using quite dubiously instead of forcing us to rewrite our whole application so um, yeah that was a good adventure so yeah thanks for watching 
It's been fun. And I'll see you next time. Take care.